Amen. So um, tomorrow starts um, the Canton School District's new year. And so as parents, some of y'all are really, really excited. Because those kids are going back to routine, right? And they're, they're going back, and you're going to get a breathe once in a while. Kids are, well, that's a mixed bag of emotions right there. So but tomorrow, the new school year kicks off. And so um, each year, I've, I try to, the last Sunday before school starts um, in town here, I try to have a message for the children. And so um, this year is no different. I, I, I need us to remember that this isn't about um, um, this message, no child left behind. This message isn't just about your kiddos. It isn't just about my grandkiddos. It's not just about the kiddos on the bus or activity bus, uh, uh, on the route bus or the activity bus. It's not just about them. It's not just, it, it, it's, it's about the kiddos. It's about all children, no matter the age. This message isn't just for the littles. Um, and, and so I just want us to understand that, that um, no matter the age, I want no child to be left behind. And, and more important than that, God said that he wants no child left behind. And so from that is where we, where we there, I, and I know there's, I want to do a disclaimer, okay, because I know there's the whole no child left behind thing that happened in the early 2000s, got that. I'm not going to go into great detail on that, but the, just in case there's anyone who doesn't understand what that is, that was uh, the, the bill that was passed into law, or the act that was passed into law by George W. Bush um, back in 2002. Um, it was a bipartisan bill created um, in 2000, the end of 2001. Uh, it was brought into law because people, the government, thought that the, our children were not measuring up to the standard of the rest of the world, and America wasn't in first place education-wise, and, and what and so they felt that there was a they could put into law a way to make our kids smarter, um, to educate our kids better. And they did that by threatening to take away funding away from the schools if the if the kids didn't pass these standardized tests. And we all remember the standardized tests. You've heard about them, even if you haven't been in school for them. Um, and so all of that and that what, what that did ultimately the short version of what that did. Uh, and I remember talking with teachers about this. Uh, what it ultimately it did is taught them, uh, forced them, because they were so limited on time that kids had to pass these tests. If the, if the right number of kids didn't pass the tests in the school, um, and if there was three years in a row that they didn't pass, it, enough of them passed the test, then the school would lose its federal funding. And so in order for them to make sure, and, and there were teachers who got fired because their kids didn't, enough of their kids didn't pass the standardized test. And so in order for them to keep their jobs and continue to educate as much as they could, they would have to come up with creative ways of grading and teaching. And one of those ways, they, they, the phrase that I heard over and over again was, teach the test. They would teach the test. Well, that means that I'm going to tell you that, oh, this is on the test. Go ahead and put it down in your notes, okay? Oh, this, this is on the test. Put it in your notes. This isn't on a test. Don't worry about remembering this. I actually heard those words from teachers, okay? So, so it was a matter of, of it because they wanted the student to know, and interestingly, some tests you couldn't have notes on, but interestingly, the standardized, te standardized testing, um, on occasion, they were allowed to have notes, because this is on a test, so write it down in your notes. The reality is what happened was it, di it was intended to help our children become smarter, at least on the world stage. The reality is it did not help our children become smarter. And no child left behind actually, in my opinion, did far more damage than it did good to a well-rounded education. And so I'm not going to get political. Um, I just believe that there were more children left behind than not. It's, it's when participation trophies started coming out. It's when um, um, uh, assistance came out on grading. It's when um, there, there, there was um, um, creative ways of grading things. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying it's, it's the teachers were forced into it. The schools were forced into it because they need the federal funds, right? Unfortunately, the government didn't know what they didn't know. 
And so anyway, that was the, the short version of No Child Left Behind because they wanted No Child Left Behind, everyone needed to pass. That's not what we're talking about today. But in a way it is. Okay? Um, but that had nothing to do with the title for this message. It had nothing to do with this message at all. Instead, God today led us to no child left behind. I've shared with you before that, that, that um, starting to drive school bus opened my eyes up. I've been learning a ton about kids, interacting with kids, all that stuff, even interacting with parents a lot better. Um, a lot of things that I've learned, it's been a very good thing for me. Um, doing things differently. That's not the only place God's been growing me. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity, I was invited to, to um, share uh, at chapel, share a message at chapel at, at Mulberry Camp, which is, um, if you know Dave and Jill Hammett, uh, that's the, the Bible camp that they've been doing primarily for the grandchildren the last two years, but also this year they add some other folks that were there, some other kids that were there, um, and they're just asking God, what do we do with this, right? And so he, David invited me down to share a message on Tuesday night. It went Monday through Friday, so I said, okay, Dave, I can do this, I think. Um, that's not my forte. What have I said so many times, right? I don't teach children. I don't teach that age. I believe God called me and said, look, look, I want you to teach that age. And he's trying to help me to grow, better, grow in that way, right? And so on, on, uh, I, when Dave asked me, I said, okay. I said, yeah, I'll do that um, uh, after, after some prayer and some consideration, right? Um, and, and so I'm asking Dave, I said, Dave, what is it you want me to teach? He said, Sheldon, on Monday, we're going to teach creation. So the first six days, take a break, right? Um, we're going to have, we're doing, we're doing creation. Um, and so the second day, I would like you to be able to, if you would, teach on the Garden of Eden. And not just the Garden of Eden, like, because there's a lot of the Garden of Eden, right? Um, he said, on Wednesday, we're going to teach about the fall, so I don't want you to go there. He said, but if you could teach about the Garden of Eden, what it was like, the comparison to heaven and the promise that we have when it comes to heaven, right? And, and so that, the, draw the correlations in there. He says, you can put a teaser in there about, and then something else happened, you'll learn about that tomorrow kind of thing, right? But, but just, uh, sh so I was like, okay, we can do that. And he said, and then, and then he said, but also, I would really appreciate if you could keep it to 15 to 20 minutes. Because kids' attention spans only last 15 to 20 minutes. And I said, I'll try. <laughs> I said, no, what I actually said, I said, I, I think I can do that. I said, I, I think I can do that. So we, I'm there. I got the opportunity to share um, on Tuesday evening. And Tuesday evening after chapel, the kids learned, actually learned quite a bit. Um, and, and, but here's the thing. Pastor learned something also that night. Um, because Dave and I were talking after the chapel time, the, the, the uh, message time, then they went to, a, they had a little bonfire going. And so the kids went there and Dave and I were talking afterwards. And Dave, um, I said, I said, I think I, I think I kept it in the 15 to 20 minute range. I'm not sure. I don't know. Because I'm terrible at trying to time that. I don't, I just let God speak, you know. And, and so um, he said, you know, you did really good at that. And he said, and they were attentive, and they, they were paying attention, and they were learning. And he said, they were excited to hear about God, right? And so we're talking, and, and um, as, as Dave shared that with me, I heard something else very loud and clear. Um, I heard God tell me, Don't leave my children behind. Don't leave my children behind. Thank you for not leaving my children behind. And he opened my eyes to realize he wasn't talking about Camp Mulberry. 
He opened my eyes to help me understand it wasn't just about the children, but don't leave my children behind. For weeks, six weeks, eight weeks ago, I knew the title of this message. I'm like, Lord, first day, the Sunday before school starts, what message do you want me to share with the parents for the children? What, what message is it you want me to share? And the response he gave me was immediate and, and uh, solid. No child left behind. I'm like, that's a great title, Lord. Now what are we going to do with it? Um, you know, and, and so for several weeks there, I'm like, Lord, what is it you want me to teach? And he said, no child left behind. And it was constant, no child left behind. That's the only response I got until Camp Mulberry. He said, Sheldon, I don't want you to let, leave my children behind. I don't, I don't want you to, but he, he made it clear, not just these children, but these children as well. We're going to be changing... We're going to be changing some things up a little bit, um, and, and and I'll get to that here a little more in, in just a minute. But but um, God said, "I don't want you to put my children to sleep. I don't want you to leave my children behind." Dave shared as we were talking. He said, um, "He said uh, uh, full transparency." And, and I knew he was asking me a question. And I said, absolutely. What, what, what do you got? He said, you remember a couple of weeks ago when I brought the grandsons with me to ch celebrate the church service? I said, yep. And he said, you probably noticed that they were, they would one get up and go out and one get up and go out, one get up and go out. Um, and, and then they, but as soon as one came back, the next one would leave again, right? And I said, yeah. I said, I figured they're probably going out and they're probably out. I said, I know snacks were out, so I figured they're probably going to get some, their boys, right? And so go get some snacks and what? He goes, no, they were falling asleep. They were falling asleep because you had lost them. And he said, so I was sending them out one at a time. And I did ask for permission to share this. And he said, you share anything we talked about. I'm okay with it. Um, and it, this is not a bash to anyone. And I'm thankful. I am so very thankful he was honest with me. He said, I was sending them out one at a time to go run three laps around the parking lot and come back in so they'd be awake. So that, and then the next one would go out and run three laps and then come back in and be awake. And they just kept rotating through, which explains why I never seen them come back with food or a drink. And I don't normally, nothing, I don't, you guys do a lot of stuff and I don't pay attention. I have people go, I'm sorry I fell asleep. And I'm like, I didn't even notice. And so, you know, uh, um, and, and so, you know, but the reality is this, right? Um, um, that hit home with me. The children can't keep attention. We do family service. First Sunday of every month, and, and, and I've been failing our children. I've been failing our children. God was very clear. He doesn't want any children left behind. I've shared with you, well, let me share, in Matthew 18, verse 2, uh, he called the, a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, this is he being Jesus. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child and is, is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. If anyone causes one of these little ones... We think children because he called the child. If anyone calls one of these little ones, but he goes on to say, those who believe in me. Those who believe in me, if anyone causes them to stumble, it would be better for them to have a millstone hung around their neck. A millstone, if you don't know what that is, that was actually the big, huge stone they used to grind the grain in their mills. Okay, he's talking, hang that thing around your neck and be thrown into the lake, into the sea. I refuse to be the person who 
leads astray, who, who um, causes one of the, these w- ones who believe in me to stumble. I refuse to cause the children to fall. I refuse to cause the children to fall. That's your next slide, Brian. I believe in the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the conviction of the Holy Spirit, not just for me, but for you also, for everyone. God speaks to each and every one of us, whether we're willing to listen or not. He speaks to each and every one of us, and the Holy Spirit convicted me. And he convicted me. And I am a person who has been, you've probably had a conversation with me at some point, or you may have either had one with me or heard someone have one with me, talking about the time. And, oh, and especially if you're on my leadership, te- leadership team in any way, shape, or form. But you can't go so long, you can't go so long, you can't go so long. And my response has been, if they're here for the right reasons, I can. Because I don't put a, m- a muzzle on the Holy Spirit. I don't wrap God around a watch. And God said, two Tuesdays ago, don't leave my children behind. Don't leave my children. But here, here's what I found. Is that we've had a lot of people come in and out of here. I shared this a couple weeks ago. A lot of people come in and through these doors. New people come through these doors. And after service, it's like, oh, good message, great message. Uh, great message, we'll be back. And we've not yet seen them back. There's been a lot of people who traveled through these doors, rotated through. And what I found over the last couple of weeks And nobody knew what this message was about. I hadn't shared it with stuff even asked me last week. So do you have any, actually on Wednesday, do you have any? uh, Nope. I have nothing for you. I did not share this. Over the last couple weeks, I've had several adults talking about how people that they saw were here, and they seemed like they were good, but they, they had been watching their watches, watching their phones, and got up and scooched right away. And God convicted me. I believe that he's the one who said, Sheldon, don't leave my children behind. I'll explain that a little more in a second here. Um, Romans 10, 14, 15. How how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Paul was teaching to the church of Rome. He was saying, hey, all Jews and Gentiles, not just Gentiles, not just Jews, Jesus died for every one of us, and we are all equal when we come to Christ. Um, and we all become children of God when we come in Christ. And so, um, and I, I'm struggling because I'm trying to watch my notes because I'm trying to watch the time that I've been convicted I need to be aware of. Um, and, and so, so please forgive me if it's, if this is a transitional journey for me. Um, and and uh, you have no idea how hard this is for me. Um, and, and this verse to me personally says, how can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they call on the one they have not heard? How can they believe in the one they have not heard of, right? Um, how can they hear if they're asleep? How can they hear if they don't come back through the door? How can they hear if they're not here? God convicted me of that. Several of you have talked to me. My wife, like, is jumping in her seat back there. She's just doing it on the inside. She's just, she's hated the fact that I won't put a clock on God. Um, and, and, and God said, man, if they're not here, they're not going to hear. How can they hear about me if they're not going to come? And so, and it's not a matter of um, Acts 20, Acts 20, verse 7, okay? So um, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were, where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. 
Yeah, those words have been used on me before. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. Sheldon, how can they hear if they're lost in the droning of the voice? How can they hear if they're falling asleep and falling out the window to not return? How can they hear? How can they come to know me if you just continue to go on? Now, I'm not sure, and in fact, maybe in this moment right now, God is telling me in my heart, how's your pride? In this moment right now, he just entered a question into my heart. Were you doing it for me or were you doing it for you? That's something I'm going to have to wrestle with. What it tells me is the Holy Spirit is saying, Sheldon, did you continue to go and go fully because I was leading you or did you get off on your own trail? And that has to change. And there are some in here who are like, dude, you know what? I'm with you. We got it. We're good. Just keep going. In fact, there are several that have told me, don't worry about the clock. Don't worry about the clock. In fact, there are several who told me that who no longer are here. Interesting. As long as the Spirit speaks, just keep going. They're no longer here. truth that I've realized is that adults can't focus more than 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Adults can't focus more than 20 to 30 minutes at a time. And there are some of you who will be like, oh no, I'm with you, Pastor. I've been with you the whole time. I've been with you the whole time. But there isn't a single person who's told me that they've been with you the whole time that I haven't, they haven't either told me themselves they've fallen asleep during the message or someone else has told me that they looked over and saw them sleeping during the message. That's okay. I'm not upset about that. I thank God he convicted me. Because the reality is studies, and I looked at several, several studies um, in the last week over this, and, and they've actually come to, the, they've, through their studies, since, depending on, because it was several studies, there was the first one that I looked at was done in 2001. This last one, I, or the l most recent one I looked at was started in 2004, um, and they lasted for a t approximately two-decade period for each of the studies. And each of the studies have said this, that the results of the studies say that adults, adults focus, the, the focus of adults in the last two decades, their attention spans in adults have been reduced by 50 to 66% in the last two decades. Not... Not like, you know, there's sometimes they're losing their attention. The adult attention span has been, so if you were able to stay truly focused, and sometimes we're like, no, I was, I've said, oh, no, I was there. There were times I was in la-la land. But I came back, so I was there the whole time, right? The reality is if you were able to stay truly focused for an hour Two decades ago, some of you uh, don't even know about that, right? Um, but but the reality is, if you were able to stay focused for two for an hour two decades ago, today you can only focus most likely. Not everyone, obviously, there's exceptions. This is a wide paintbrush, but most likely you can only focus for between twenty and thirty minutes. We blame the kids for having no attention span, but the reality is the children have no attention span anymore either. See, technology has, has drawn our attention, but it's also sapped our attention. So we're going to make some changes because adults can't focus for more than 20 to 30 minutes either. So you're probably wondering how do we not leave children behind? How do we not leave children behind? Children and children. How do we not leave them behind? There's going to be some changes. And I'm probably going to get some pushback on this. 
but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt I'm convicted by the Holy Spirit to do this. God is telling me we're no longer, there's not going to be the 50-minute message anymore. There's not going to be the 40-minute message anymore. Today, my, I don't think I'm going over. I think I'm okay yet. Um, but the rea- how are we going to do that? The, and, and why would we do that? This has never been about Sheldon. This has never been about you. It's never been about celebrate Canton. It's all about the kingdom of God. And when God tells us to do something, we need to start doing it. I'm all about it. I can sit there and listen to someone preach, and I can listen to them preach and preach and preach and preach. If they're a good preacher, and I, I, that's probably not the right wording, if there's someone who can keep my attention, because there's those who can just go and drone, right? And, and, um, but if they're a preacher who's got, man, I can write notes for an hour, easy. But that's not everyone. And I don't think that's me. But this has never been about me nor you. It's about the kingdom. And so what we need to do is our messages. I'm not going to shortchange our messages, but we're going to shorten our messages. Again, it's not about those who are here. And I know I have several in this room right now who are going, Pastor, why would you do that? Because there are those who are coming, they're hearing, and they're leaving, and never returning, and never get to hear the rest of the message. There are children who are being left behind because it was too long for them to be able to focus on and to truly grasp. And what's the point in preaching for an hour if most people are only gathering 20 to 30 minutes? So instead, if we have a message that, this message, it's a single message. So instead, if this was going to be an hour, instead it would be two half-hour messages. I'll be breaking messages up a little more. Um, Another thing is that I believe, um, and I've stood by this for a long time, you notice that I'll have two, three, four examples of a point I'm trying to make because people understand things from different directions. And so I, I've always tried to make sure I have more examples so I make sure I reach everybody. But God's convicting me that it'll reach the ones it needs to reach without two, three, four examples. So there will be one or two examples for a point. Instead of three or five, or there's been the weeks where it's like, man, this is just all so good. We're just going to, you know, um, which could be a pride thing. Okay, because I'm the one who says it needs to be a fill in the blank or not. And so that could be a pride thing. But why? But instead of three or five or whatever points, we'll do two weeks with two or three points. Because here's the thing. I've been convicted that I've been leaving his children behind. And I won't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I know it grieves his heart. And it definitely grieves my heart. I've never done anything I didn't believe God le- didn't lead me to. When it comes to pre- pastoring a church, I, yeah, there's a lot of things I did that, that you know that. But when it comes to pastoring this congregation, I've never done anything that I didn't believe God was convicting me of or directing me to. And I'm not going to start questioning him now. I'm not going to argue with him now. So we're going to shorten up some messages. And it has nothing to do with because someone wants to make lunch plans at 1130. It has nothing to do with, well, there's this thing going on at noon. It has nothing to do with anyone's calendar. It has all about not to, about leaving no child behind. I don't want to leave any child behind. And so we're going to be more reined in and I don't know how that's I, it's going to be it's a it's a it's a journey it's a transition for me that I never anticipated but I have never been more convicted than I have been in the last couple of weeks convicted by God and the things he's been doing from multiple areas coming together all converging on this message that I had no idea the subject of this message like I shared about six weeks ago eight weeks ago somewhere in there he gave me the title And that's all I had until two Tuesdays ago when Dave and I were conversing. And he gave me the message that night.
Matthew 18, verse 14. This is beautiful because, see, I want to not leave any of God's children behind. (laughs) And here's the thing. God will never leave you behind. He makes that promise. He makes that promise in multiple places. This is the one that struck home with me. Matthew 18, verse 14, Jesus is talking. He's talking about the the 100 sheep, leaving the 99 for the one. And he says, in the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing, our Father, (laughs) because we're his children, our Father in heaven, your Father in heaven is not willing that that, that any of these little ones should perish. Remember we talked about little ones earlier? And some of those little ones are very big. And these little ones, God will never leave us alone. He will always seek us out. He's always there. We've talked about with the Prado, so many different places in Scripture. And so um, that goes, here's the thing, because some of you are like, but wait, now I thought no child left behind is the day before school uh, starts. And I thought we were talking about our kids, and I am. Because I'm talking about no child and no to teach that child. This child has to let it flow to that child. And some of us are really good at that, and some of us are not very good at that. So, Mom and Dad, I just want you to know, this goes to your house as well as God's house. Okay? This is not about just here. And I just pray that as we take this home and we remember, we remember, because I struggle with that. I struggle remembering the kid can't focus past 15 minutes. And honestly, I believe, I didn't look up studies on this one, but I think kids are even less than 15 to 20 minutes anymore. And I don't think I'm probably very far off, because if adults are at 20 to 30 minutes, then how can kids be any long, how can kids be that long, right? Um, and, and, and try talking to kids and having a long conversation. There are some you can, because this is a wide paintbrush, but most kids, I don't think, probably can even make the 15-minute attention span. I watch all the time, trying to, whether they're on the bus or watching parents do it, trying to get their kid to focus, and they can't do five minutes. Mom and Dad, I just, I just, I pray that you will, you remember that your kiddo can't stay attentive that long. They can't focus that long. And so we need to break it up a little bit. And here's the thing. Here's what, I, I pray that you're better parents than I was. Because I didn't do well with my children, and now I know that. I didn't know it before. See, my children, I used a lot of words and gave very little wisdom. I pray that you'll be able to use a lot of wisdom with very few words. Let God's heart speak through you to them. Let the Holy Spirit lead all your conversations. He was not leading mine. So my prayer is that you'll take this home and remember... My kid's super smart because everyone's kid's the smartest kid, right? Everyone's kid's the most attentive kid. Everyone's kid's the best, right? But may we remember with the wide brush stroke, maybe your child needs you to use less words and more wisdom. Maybe your child needs to hear more Christ and less Sheldon or mom and dad or grandma and grandpa. So that's my prayer for you today, that we leave no child behind, no child and no child behind. And I pray that God just enlightens you and overflows you this week as you walk away with this message. Father God, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Lord, again, I have no idea how I did time-wise. And Lord, it's not about the clock. And may we understand may we understand that maybe I can be attentive for longer than that, but not everyone can be. And most can't be, in fact. Father God, may we understand that conviction of the Holy Spirit on a person, conviction from you, uh, um, when it comes to hearing your voice and responding to your voice and knowing it was you speaking, that, Lord, may we all hear your voice today. May we all receive what you have, and may we all bless our children as they start this new school year. May we bless them with fewer words, more wisdom, more godly wisdom. Father God, not that we don't want them to know that we love them, but I mean when we're trying to teach, Lord, please help us. 
Help us to understand I need to be wiser with less. And I can only do that through Christ. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask you just to lead us. Just lead us. Lead us to not leave our children behind. And, Lord, help us to uh, lead us to not leave our brother and sister, who are also children, behind. Father God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for... Thank you for humbling me, Father. And may you humble each and every one of us, dear Lord, that we hear your heart, your heart, not our pride, your heart, not our want, that we hear your wa- your heart, dear Lord, what you want is far more important, what you require is far more important. And Lord, may we hear that. In Jesus' name we pray.